Bonjour everyone, Pentuf here today for a new video in which we are going to talk about Wargaming leaving Russia. Not necessarily the why or anything like that, because obviously this is the war and every single other YouTuber has talked about it, but rather about the consequences of those actions, because this will have a direct impact on you and especially your wallet. So, if you're not living in a cave, you know that there is a war going on between Russia and Ukraine started by Russia. And of course, as Belarus is the main supporter of Russia in this war and they said it uh, to the international community it's kind of logical that Wargaming announces to leave both of those countries and what is by the way the common point between those two countries Wargaming has stalled has its company implemented in both of those and maybe that some of you are thinking that it's completely dumb from Wargaming to live an area in which it had most of its players and you could be right and wrong at the same time because as a company unfortunately if you want to keep your business with the world and the world decides to sanction economically one country you have to follow and leave as soon as possible. Otherwise, those sanctions will sooner or later hit you directly. And this is the case, for example, and this is why we're gonna start with the economic reason, of the uh, ruble, or uh, I don't know, the money in Russia. I know that in France we say ruble, but I don't know how we say in other languages, and especially English. But basically, following the sanctions, this is what the uh, ruble was about. It was 0 0.00069 euros, so it completely dropped down to a quarter of its original value before the attack, uh, as you can see right there. And even if it starts to come back a little bit and to get higher, it's not gonna follow here it's simply because there are economic sanctions and Russia is trying to protect itself but I don't think that the ruble will keep this value forever but we don't know I'm not an economist after all and this is the first reason why Wargaming wants to leave you can't stay in a country which money is going to devaluate so fast because of economic sanctions and because Wargaming is afraid of that they had to leave and now there is the second one which is the politic. When you take a look at what is happening worldwide, everyone is sanctioning Russia and especially the companies that want to stay in Russia and do business with them. Of course, regarding the international community, it's a better bet or at least it seems to be a better bet because I'm not someone, uh, I'm not here to judge or anything. But as a company, maybe it's a better idea to keep the European and USA markets rather than focusing on Russia only followed first the economic sanctions. But second, how people could view you. It would be too much of a risk for Wargaming to keep their activities in Russia and not get sanctioned by players that would see it as a support to Russia and decide to leave the game or anything like that. They had to follow, unfortunately, because I don't feel like companies should have to carry the burden of economic sanctions but that's how it is and wargaming followed unfortunately because they didn't have any other choices so yeah this is why you can say goodbye to your russian and belarus friends now of course keep in mind one thing if you are smart enough to uh, out maneuver the different sanctions if you use a i don't know if even if it's a, a VPN will be enough, but maybe that you will be able as a Russian player to play on the European server or something like that, which is good and bad at the same time. Good because we're going to see more players, but bad because it's going to be really hard for us to communicate because of obviously if Russians have their own server, they are talking their own language. But enough talking about the Russians. They don't have access anymore to the game, which kind of sucks for them. Rip. But what is going to happen to players that can still play the game? The first thing I want to focus on is obviously how it will impact the revenue of Wargaming. Of course, as Russia is the main source of revenue for Wargaming and they decided to leave the place, it's going to hit pretty hard. What does it imply? Obviously that we're going to see more and more offers. And here it's kind of a double-sided sword. It's either we are going to see juicy offers to for people to spend more because they see it's a juicy offer so they decide hey you know what why not we should definitely give it a try or we are unlucky and well we are gonna see offers like the Kampfpanzer that we saw like one or two days ago in which you have 
really small chances to get the tank and you will have to gamble over and over and over in order to get it something that is pretty sure if wargaming decided maybe i don't know for the upcoming two or three tanks to go to come to not do them in crates following that decision you can expect every single new tank to be in crates as well and another bad news or good news depends on how you see it uh, is the release of tank company even if the game is still in beta and not announced yet if it was to be released this year or even next year it will probably be a struggle for wargaming to be able to compete with them because of course as they have a full studio and not closed any they will probably be faster on the updates or anything like that and of course as this game was pretty hyped by youtubers and i'm one of them uh when it was first in test maybe that some people will definitely leave blitz to play tank company because it's the exact same thing but with a 15 versus 15 matchmaking which can be more interesting for a couple of players and finally what i fear the most is that the monthly update will not necessarily be a thing anymore you know uh, if you're familiar with the game right now, if you've played at least two months, you know that every 15 of the month we have an update. Uh, it's usually on Wednesday and if it's not, it's probably going to be released the 16th, 17th or 14th. But it's basically Wednesday this week. And well, I don't think it's going to be the case anymore because of course, when you lose your main force of developers that are sitting in Russia or Belarus, knowing that right now people of Russia can't leave their territory because of international sanctions, you couldn't expect them to work on the game anymore. And as Wargaming is sacrificing its biggest branch of developers because of the war and what's happening, they're probably gonna take ages to release updates of course we're gonna step back a little bit from uh, the informations i gave in this video because nothing is sure i'm pretty sure that as wargaming is a big company they adapted and they are already working on the current update and doing the things they have to in order to keep the exact same rate of uh the rate of release of videos and also of updates but it's necessarily going to impact them sooner or later and we will see that impact but still it's kind of brave from wargaming to sacrifice their biggest market just to get in line with the international sanctions and at least it shows the to the world and to the player that unlike what most people thought at the beginning of the war wargaming is not supporting russia and even if they were I don't know, it's none of our business in my opinion, but it's just my opinion. Hopefully you enjoyed that video, guys. Tell me, especially in the comments, what you think the new sanctions are going to be. And finally, I know that a lot of people are thinking that I'm dying inside since my latest video, but it's just that I recall that at 7 a.m., like 10 minutes after, uh, after waking up, which is kind of logical to have that voice when you just woke up. So hopefully you enjoyed, and I'm going to see you soon for a new video. Bye.